sisters, real quick, just want to do a quick sound check with y'all. How are you guys doing this morning? Good, I'm so glad to hear it. How many of you guys are excited to see a Sparky show today? Yeah. Ah, there we go, all right. So, just out of curiosity, how many of you have seen a Sparky show before? Yeah. Oh, we have several repeat visitors, wonderful. Well, if you've been to a Sparky show before, as you know, not all Sparky shows are the same, so something that you see today might be a new demonstration for you. How many of you have seen a Sparky show from the days past? Oh, thank you. I love the honesty. All right, so if you've been to a Sparky show before, you might remember back in the day that these shows used to go on for long periods of time, and a lot of this was for human entertainment. So that's not to say that what you're seeing today isn't going to be entertaining, but we switched our training into the 2000s. So going forward from then till now, what we do is we focus on animal husbandry and welfare. So with our pin and pen today, we are going to be doing a training demonstration known as operant conditioning with positive reinforcement. Do you guys get that? I'm gonna ask you about that later. So, the type of training that we do here does have to do with healthcare, and so everything that we do, while it is going to be an amazing demonstration, will help so that way our animals are a little bit more accustomed to the healthcare that they will be asked to be involved in. So it looks like we do have a couple of pinnipeds just ready to go in the back here. Pinniped meaning fin-footed creatures. We have two of the three types of pinnipeds here at Como. We have California sea lions, which we'll see in the back end up on the front today. We also have two types of seals. We have harbor seals and gray seals. Now, we don't have the third type of pinniped because they can weigh as much as four polar bears. So that's about 4,000 pounds. We don't have any walrus here, here, walruses here, unfortunately, because you guys would be in the splash zone if they were to jump off the stage. But we do have our California sea lions joining us today. So let's go ahead and give a warm round of applause to our trainer and our bed. Look at that. She's just as excited to be here as you guys. Um, let me see who is joining us here on stage today. It looks like we have Sumi with us today. <laughs> Subi is our 16-year-old California sea lion, and on the backstage, I can't quite see them, but I know they're there, we have Nico and Poppy, and Nico and Poppy are our 8-year-old sea lions. We also do training, such as what you're seeing with our seals, although it does look a little bit different due to different body anatomies, but for our seals, we have Cash and Killian for the harbor, and then for our gray seals, we have Lolly and Medusa. <laughs> So, does anyone remember what that type of training was called? It was operant conditioning with positive reinforcement. All right, you guys remembered. Wonderful. There you go. A round of applause for you guys. Nice job. So, operant conditioning with positive reinforcement shows up in three steps. And the way this works is so. The first step is to ask our animal to demonstrate a behavior, and we'll do so by using a target and a cue, or a combination of both. So in this case, the target could be the zookeeper's hand, or it could be that hoop, or that rubber ducky on stage, and then we have that cue, and so in this case, Becky is cueing Suvi to do a little round of applause. Now, there's going to be that click that you're hearing after that behavior is demonstrated. Nice job, yeah. So after that click, that's how our animal knows that they have done that behavior correctly. So you might have heard this click before. We might use it with our dog training, but using clickers did originate with marine mammal training. So you can do this with your dogs, your cats at home. You can do this with your children or your partners. <laughs> so of course, there is a third and final step, and this is everybody's favorite part. There must be a reward for behavior well done. So in this case, what kind of rewards do you think a pinniped might like? Yes, fish. Seafood makes up a huge part of a pinniped's diet, and the type of fish that we give them here consists of capelin, herring, I know they might get salmon or squid or scallops too. There is a variation in their diet. So look at that. That's a good example of having a physical target. And in this case, we're doing a retrieval. That second part, that bridge is that click. That third part, it's going to be a lovely fishy reward. So, why do we do training with our pinnipeds? And why do we do it as often as we do? 
We do two Sparky shows a day, and we also do a third training session with our pinnipeds. This is a way that we can simulate giving them their diet, the way they would receive it in the wild, and many feedings frequently throughout the day. Training also helps, so that way they can participate in their own health care, such as eye drops or teeth brushing, or being comfortable with zookeepers touching their bodies. So we call this desensitization, but really it just means that we're getting friendly with each other. Everyone is on the same page about what is going to happen. So, different types of things that we might do for our veterinary care consist of, as I said before, eye drops, brushing teeth, doing body presents like so, so we can make sure that skin, fur, and bones are feeling good, and doing different types of limb presents, the show Range of Motion. So when Subi's clapping her hands, it's very sweet, very endearing, gets you guys all excited as well. But this is also a good way to show that she has full range of motion in her flippers. Now we have our sea lion on stage. We don't have a seal with us, but if we had a seal up here as well, you would notice there are some pretty noticeable physical differences between the two. So you'll see that Subi, she's pretty graceful in the water and out of the water. She uses her two front flippers to maneuver herself pretty swiftly about land. If we had a seal, they would be doing their best, but they would be doing something called glumping or inchworming. So that's where they kind of centipede along on land. They don't have those long front flippers. Their short stubby flippers are used to help them steer in the water, although they do have those nice long flippers in the back, just like our sea lions do. Now the reason for this difference, in addition to some very cute dancing, is because of the way they hunt. So sea lions, they hunt together in groups, and so they use their long flippers to do quick turns about in the water, so that way they can kind of corral groups of fish into a smaller, dense group. Seals, they hunt one-on-one, -on -one, so what they do is they chase their prey. So having those short flippers helps them to change direction swiftly, and so that way <laughs> they can just narrow in, hone in on their prey. Now, I'm hearing a lot of oohs, I'm hearing a lot of ahs. That means you guys are definitely entertained, and I'm very happy for that. But something that you are doing, which is similar to what our zookeepers do with the pinnipeds, is you are creating an empathy link with our animals. So by seeing them do something endearing, something that you can relate to or you think is very awe-inspiring, that helps you to feel empathy for our animals and to better understand their emotions. Yeah, go ahead and wave. Thank you. Um, but doing this training, especially one-on-one -on -one with zookeepers, helps our pinnipeds are comfortable when it is time for healthcare checkups. It helps them to get used to the veterinarians and the vet techs who work with them, and it creates a bond with them as well. So that way, they know who they're working with and they're comfortable. So, believe it or not, pinnipeds have something in common with a lot of you younger people in the audience, and that is attention spans. So, our younger pinnipeds, they're about eight years old, and that's about as long as they can handle for shows. So, our shows nowadays are short and sweet, and it's all dependent on how much our pinnipeds want to participate. So, just remember, for operant conditioning with positive reinforcement, there are those three simple steps in order to get a behavior that you desire. You can do this with your kiddos and with your partners as well. So just for an example, how many of you younger friends here in the audience have been asked to make your bed or set the table or do something yeah, that's helpful? Did your parents promise you something like extra screen time or an allowance or maybe ice cream by chance? That's operant conditioning with positive reinforcement. They ask you to do a behavior, you do it successfully, they give you a reward. So. My friends, what was your favorite behavior that you saw Sumi doing today? Go ahead and shout it out for me real quick. The handstand, <laughs> someone say break dancing? Yeah, it's a good one too. Yeah, so what we do here at Como is those trainings. We do those at 11.30 and 2.30 daily. And I know a lot of us didn't bring all of our friends or family members with us. So something I would like you to do to spread the word and the mission of our conservation here at Como is tell that friend or family member what that favorite thing was that you saw today. That way we can encourage more folks to come visit the zoo and see what we're up to, as well as spread the word. So once again, my name is Grace. If you have any questions for me, I'll be down here on the glass to answer them. And I hope you guys enjoy the nice weather and the rest of your visit here at Como Zoo.